Hey guys and welcome to part 5 of the Resident Evil 6 playthrough. Now that after we watched the awkward VHS tape of a naked woman coming out of a cocoon, we're moving on with the lab. Yeah, that was just freaking disgusting. <laughs> or you'll find out who the madman is who recorded that later on. It looked like something out of Predator. I don't know if it's aliens or aliens versus <laughs> Predators. I don't recall any of that camera coming into the movies and there's the cocoons right there. No, I mean like where the face hoggers. <clears throat> now, the cocoons here, they will not hatch, they're just to give you a bit of a fear factor. Excuse me. They will hatch later on in another campaign. So they're trying to make it scary here? Yeah. Like I said, Leon's campaign is the only one that tries to be scary. Right, for this puzzle, it's pretty much very simple. All you have to do is pull the levers in a, con in a specific order and all the platforms will then collapse and you'll be able to go to the door. <laughs> But of course there's zombies here too, and these these zombies are coming through the air vents. These are some very agile zombies, aren't they? <laughs> well he didn't last long. And leave it to here. And that one. There you go, three in a row. Where's my triple star? You don't get one. <laughs> Now, the, when you pull this lever, it's going to force one platform, but then this means you're going to have to go underground. That was real. What? I just left my hand. <laughs> oh, don't get in. Bye! <laughs> yeah, Andrew's cat has joined us in the studio as well. <laughs> Alright. Sneaked in. <laughs> Why am I attracted to cat? Why are cats attracted to me? <laughs> Here we are talking about cats in a zombie apocalypse game, eh? Yeah, this is better than talking about dogs. <laughs> I'm a dog person, I take offence to that. <laughs> I would say what are the blue mm -hmm. things there, but I'm guessing that's where they keep the humans in. Yeah, this is where they keep the human test subjects. Because obviously it's an evil laboratory and they must test everything to be correct. Suck them on a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so now we have to go to the next level, which again, the game blatantly points out to you. Now the weapon I'm using right now, you get this much later, but because, the, the, again, I did not know how to get all the weapons from scratch, because I, again, I thought when you pick up the weapon, that's it, you cannot get a new game unless you delete your save file, and I didn't want to do that. So the weapon I'm using right now is an assault rifle, and as a melee weapon, it has a knife attached to it. With its own unique stab male animations. Yeah, now Andrew's cat is like making itself comfy on my jacket. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Because she's a sook, that's why. Now, don't be fooled by some of the scientists here where they've got light. You know those um, chest lights you get? Yeah. They don't worry about them. They'll try to blind you, but they're not that effective. Now for this last switch, Adele's going to have to toss me up to the top of this so I can go to the other side of the platform and get the switch while she has to wait. So what is she doing? Like, is she just waiting for you? To just she has to survive something? against the zombies because they're going to continuously spawn in at this point. Yeah, I see. Hurry, Leon. You gotta activate this thing. So I'm trying to prevent, give her some cover as well as protecting myself as well. Oh, lovely. Bloodshot. <laughs> just what I needed. Mind you, with a sniper rifle, it's piss easy. You just shoot it twice, it goes down on its knees, melee, and then rinse repeat until it melts away. Damn it! my stomach? <laughs> yeah, William's getting attacked by the cat. <laughs> cat trouble. Just headshots. Headshots. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's me grabbed. Now you get two ways of breaking free, you either get this one which is mash the X button and then press the R2 at the right moment to kill it, or the basic one like RE5 where you just wiggle the left stick back and forth as fast as you can. I didn't know your sniper turned into a taser. Well that's because I shot the um, the generator which shocked the water. Oh and there Ade Ade yeah, Adele is getting mashed. Right, that's the levers activated, but, only, but of course there's two of them, so both of us have to be at the door. It's like the game really doesn't want you to be a dick and abandon your partner. 
Now, if it was Stephen on the other hand, well, I'm gonna have to think hard about that. I think your cat just slithered on you. Ah, it does that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Don't know if you'll be able to hear, folks, but yeah, she is purring mad. <laughs> just cats walking. <laughs> Right, now we can open these doors. Come on, Adele, this way. There we go. <laughs> so all that basically does, it closes all the platforms and then it opens this door. Excuse me for my sniffling. I, my nose is currently blocked like hell. <laughs> yeah. ah. As we said in the previous part, it's, it's flu season. Yeah. Here I am getting grabbed. Thanks, Adele. I'm melted! Oh, what a world, what a world. Nice. Can these zombies melt? Yes, they do melt when you defeat them. It's a game. It's the game's excuse to not keep the models lying on the ground. Yeah. I mean, don't you hate that when... Like, you saw that in The Force Unleashed, actually, when you defeat some of the, the troopers, like the Purge troopers, and they just disappear. Yeah. Aye, <laughs> uh, the cats do a little bit of a nibble when they're a bit happy. <sighs> Cow gaming featuring cats. <laughs> <laughs> Cat gaming that should be caught. <laughs> now, if you again that QT, if you press R two way too early, it doesn't kill the zombie. It just forces them off your body. And what that exploded right there was a nitrogen tank that some of the scientists are carrying. Some the zombie right next to you. Yep, the nitrogen freezes them in place, and if you're quickly, you can melee them, them and then they'll shatter. Okay, down the garbage. Chute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have to go through the garbage because they're gonna continuously spawn in at a fast pace, and that's the game's way of saying get the fuck moving. So now we're even underground than we went before. We're now going into the mines. This is scary. We're going into, into serious Indiana Jones here. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's continue on. That's why I want to show you. And when I do, you'll have all the answers and proof for you. The reason why I'm sliding is because if you go up to those walls, the game will force you to crawl on all fours, slowing you down. Yeah. And again, when you stand up or you're walking, at, or even when you just run at a normal pace, your stamina will refill. But for whatever reason, if you lie on your back, it refills even faster. So just take a nap. Ah, I suppose so. <laughs> and of course, like any other Resident Evil game, you want to break every single valuable, um, priceable faz that you can find. The creators of the Antiques Roadshow is going to come that knocking at your front door when you do that. And then Dickinson's real deal they like coming on saying, "Oh, you could have sold that." <laughs> Yeah, this is tedious. Deborah! That is Helena's sister. I was very serious that her sister there. Yes, it is. Deborah. Now, what happened to her is that... The, you remember that man who, who made that weird VHS tape and who's it, experimenting on people with cocoons? Yep. He kidnapped her. Helena? Then tested... Then tried to use her as a test subject. She came back negative and just dumped her in the mines. That's a shame. Oh, guess what? You can survive in the mines by yourself. Okay. Enough with the mystery. What the hell is going on here? What well, everybody's right. thinking right now just bloody tells what the answer is. No more of this mystery <laughs> bullshit. I promise. Right, what's going to happen in this section is I have to carry Deborah on my back, which means I have no guns. So Adele has to protect me until we get to the bottom of the floor. You take care of her. The only, the only thing I have that can, can be considered as a weapon is my feet. Just a so kick. So you can just curb stomp people. Yeah, and ju or just kick them. Adele has to provide me all the cover considering she's not carrying anybody. And I can't access my inventory where I've got Deborah on my back as well. So when Adele runs low health, you can't use her spell. No, I can't. She's on her own. Because it's her job to protect me for this bit. 
Well, you say button. you can use your feet and you're gonna headbutt me. Yeah, that's all I can do. <laughs> what were you saying, Colin? Yeah, I was, I was pretty much saying the same, same thing there. Was that a headbutt? No, it's basically me. It's that kick when you. It's like that kick you do when you kick down a door. Mm. And it's just that. That's the only melee weapon I can do. <laughs> you know, she's. You know, well, I'm gonna say the cat will just jump back up, William. Yeah, I think I think the cat's left the room there. Ah, apologies for that. Let's go. Go Look, zombie. Get on. No, I can't. Eat. Well, unlike well again because I've got him on my back, I can't do the counter system either. All I can do is just kick them and set them up as melees for Adele. I can still pick up items, but I just can't use them. Nice view, Capcom. Good. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a Japanese company, they have a thing for that. It just gets to the point when you look at it and you're like, come on, that's enough, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and Colin is dying. <coughs> yeah. Don't die on us, Colin. Please. <laughs> Please. Oh, am I the? Is this good? Yeah, well, we did say it's flu season, so it's only a matter of time before I catch the bloody cold or flu. I've got blood in those last hat. I'm still healthy. <laughs> ah, the good old fashioned way of sh killing a zombie shotgun to the head and blow their head off. With a headbutt. Here's a little unique. You can see some of the zombies that have got already got a steel pipe stabbed in them. As a last melee, what you can do is you can pull that steel pipe out, that zombie will die. Then you'll throw the steel pipe, and it, if another zombie is close by, it will count as another kill. So double kill mode. Oh, but that's only if, the zo if a zombie just happens to be right in your path. <laughs> if there's no zombie, it just hits a wall and that's it, and you can't pick it up again. Now at this point, remember, you remember the lassie with the glasses, Honigan? We have now lost contact with her because we're going underground. I guess it makes sense to lose the signal with her. Ah. <coughs> 20 years later. <laughs> right now we've reached the bottom floor. Deborah. And Deborah's now catching the flu season there. No, Deborah! No, Deborah! What the heck happened to her? She's now a cocoon. Ah. So who's the flu? So who's uh, Jason? In the cocoon? It depends on the mutation. You can be a clone. You can be a creature. It depends on your bio. It depends on your DNA and your genes and all that. All sciencey sh shit. Oh look, it's Deborah. Again! Or is it? Touching moment, question mark? Nope. We're a crossbow. Norman, what's that guy's name from Walking Dead? Norman something? Who that? <laughs> Ada. Ada? You look like you've seen a Leo's just like, Ada! <laughs> Everybody's now the thing about Ada in this store in this particular game, she's f mysterious as fuck. Like, she does not blatantly tell of all, all the characters she in in interacts with. She does not tell them exactly what's going on. Especially with Leon, considering that they both the him and Ada have a thing going on. Okay. Take it he links the silver hair to people. <laughs> well well it's black haired actually. Why, why did you think it was silver? Is it looks silver. It's the lighting. Nah. It's black. Like how the lighting is making Leon's hair brown, but he's really blonde. Like levels. darkish blonde. So sorry, Here's our boss fight. Helena, get away from her. Uh oh. Did they say that's not actually Deborah? That's just a woman. No, that is Deborah. She's now mutated into a spider-like creature. Oh, wait, wait, how are you not dead? <laughs> that punctured your chest, you should die by now. Plot armor. Have you ever heard of it? It's a good guy. Bruh. <laughs> right, this, what actually happens here is that Ada has now joined us for this boss fight. So there will be, so this, there will be moments where 
I'll be by myself in one section and then Adele will be by herself or vice versa Ada will switch between us and this is what and this and also part of the game as well this is what they call a story intersection because this also is in Ada's campaign except you play as Ada now this is this does not work nine times uh, like a hundred percent of the time like it doesn't work all like you can't rely on it but what you can do is when you get a story intersection the game will stop for a moment for a minute to search for any other people who are playing in the, the campaign at the exact same time with Ada for example and if you happen to get lucky the games will intersect with one another and you can have up to four players in the story but like I said it really works half the time so you can't rely on it and you know when if it's successful when you see the um the player's ID on the top right of your screen saying successfully intersected with player's game and you'll be st and, you and you can still heal each other but you just won't get that notification because they're technically not your partner quote unquote in the campaign so I have my, my, I've already made my way down to the bottom I just have to wait on these two surprise bitches surprise motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> right, now to kill the spider lookalike mummy. Aye. Well, Deborah, because soon she's Deborah! mutated. Why has Deborah got no clothes? Fan fiction, man. Fan, fan service. It's Japan. That bit cat comes like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So all you have to do, all you have to do for this boss fight is continuously shoot her until she's lying on the ground unconscious, until one of her tentacles pops up, and then you have to initiate a QTE to smash the shit out of the core. So how many cores did she get? Three. Hmm. Now you, uh, there's two other ways you can do it. You can do the QTE one, which always gets it, or you can just very, very carefully shoot the damn thing. But like I said, it, it's probably the safest way to do the QTE as it's pretty accurate and effective. I would say do the QTE as well just because like, it's simple and you don't have to waste bullets. Aye. But the thing about the QTEs, like Resident Evil, if you fail the QTEs, you will have to redo the whole thing all over again. It does not take damage for the boss. Now anyone, anyone who's a player controller can do these QTEs, so even Leon and, well, Ada and Adele, they can do those QTEs as well, but of course the AI will not do it. Because <laughs> the AI is fucking stupid. Logic. <laughs> Mind you, it's not as stupid as Resident Evil 5 where she doesn't waste bullets and endlessly, she can, she, act, she, act, she can actually can take care of herself as she's invincible. So she can't die. And I said the AIs will not die. But in oh, R5 so they will. So that yes. <laughs> so that's that's phase one of the boss. Now we are heading to further down. Yes, we're going even further under the ground. Jesus, I didn't know we were playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going underground we'll be on the ground. <laughs> yes. So now, now from Adele's perspective, she has to take the long circular stairs all the way down to the bottom. I'm stuck with Ada on a minecart. Yeah. It is Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> now there will be some timber falling, that cr crumbling down on Leon's path, and if Adele gets hit by that, she'll instantly go into dying status, and I can't do anything about her because I'm not next to her. Now the thing about dying status is that when you're in dying status, it doesn't mean you're going to die when the bar runs out. You'll get a separate bar which um, rises. If that rises, it'll allow you to go back up on your feet. Provided you do not take another dam hit a bit of damage from anything. All I can do from here is provide cover with the zombies. Good job. Ada can do the same thing, only she has a crossbow and a machine pistol. The crossbow is really good for stealth sections when you play as her in the campaign, because it's silent. <coughs> Bless you. Yeah, thank you. And a sniff. <laughs> so this is all you can do until the, the cart itself reaches the bottom of the of the of the mechanism, and then when it reaches the bottom, Adele has to then rank round up a crank 
to get it into position, and we go on a roller coaster ride. Serious? I'm not kidding. <laughs> what you thought I was joking? I thought like I never thought there'd be like a roller coaster section in a Resident Evil game. <laughs> Well, this is not the first time they've, they've done something like this. They've already done this in RE4. And that is arguably the best game in the series. Well, next to Resident Evil 7, anyway. <clears throat> Slowly turn the crank around like a good boy, Leon. <laughs> yes, Mr. Smith, that is what he's doing. <laughs> That's the Appreciate game it! Most, <laughs> Now to do an Indiana Jones thing. Essentially. So right yeah, yeah, you can still chase after me. No, you're just trying to escape the facility now. Right! Bless you. <laughs> now the having the call. <laughs> now these wooden these wooden borders here, you can shoot them down if you want, but you just at this point you'd just be wasting bullets. And here's Deborah again. Oh Deborah, fuck off. <laughs> God damn the fan service. <laughs> so here's phase two of the boss fight. And a minecart. Nope, she's alive. There she is. Now the best strategy to go about this boss is that it is to lie on your back and then just shoot for those weak spots. Because she'll do that she'll do that move where she swings her tentacles at you and it causes you to not to lose health. But if you lie down you will she'll not be able to reach you. But once you've taken all three cores, she disappears for a while. Until you get to a certain bit where you have to sh At this bit of the minecart, there's going to be a dynamite that's going to be blocking the track. Fail to shoot that, it flings you onto the off and into a bomber's pit. Dead. What, is this fucking Looney Tunes? <laughs> there's the barrel right there. Now, if you didn't see that, the game will quickly zoom in to let you know there's a barrel in the way you got to shoot it out of the way. But because I shot it before the game registered, it didn't play. Insert Raiders of the Lost Ark track here. <laughs> who else? Who else? It's been years since I saw that actually, but I do recall the minecart at the end. That was one of the best moments in the, in the movie. And by the way, if you've ever played out, I'm not. This is probably like childhood games, but if you've ever played um, Scooby Doo Mystery Mayhem. Yes, I have. Nope. <laughs> Remember this in the third level, the gold mine. <laughs> See the the minecart level. Was that the one who thought that that part of the game was just really hard? Um, no, actually, but I think it was kind of hilarious when you scrumble and they always have to have a laugh track in it. <laughs> see, it was funny at first, but see, like, if you keep failing over and over again, then that laugh track just gets really fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but the game is laughing at you <laughs> and your failures. I don't see the game there's the laugh Plot device, that's why. Plot armor. Or, do you know what? It could be the half pills. Right, what happens here is because we're split in there. If I fail to get her in time, it, she, it, the core will turn to pink and she'll destroy the platform, causing both of us to fall and causing the game over. So I have to quickly shoot that while Adele has to save Ada. Because if she falls, game over as well. <laughs> There's a lot of stake. Yeah, a lot of stake Not here, isn't there? Aye, over a sister, over a sister of a character we knew nothing about. Please. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you, if you saw a character and then you say you watched three films with that character, then they get personal with him, you get start to care a little bit more mm -hmm. compared to when you just see a character for the first time. Do 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 do. <laughs> now this is where we find out who is behind all of this. A secretly linear. Trying to gain friends. Just keep your eyes on me. I'm gonna get you out of here, Deborah. I'll help you by shaking my chair, even though I'm tied up. No, let her go. Do you remember this guy? Not her. Not my sister. The one in the white coat. Him. Who's that? Do you not recall seeing him in the previous cutscene when we were on the bus? Both 
find out his name in the next in the next cutscene. It's SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob. <laughs> I so this is Helena explaining how she was essentially blackmailed into insisting to kill the president. Hence why the university got leaked of the gas. She was blackmailed for her sister's safety. If you do not kill Donald Trump, we will do shit to your sister. <laughs> That's a fancy phone there. Too bad it's already 2017. We still don't have that kind of phone. In a very dangerous game. And if you don't... Because that phone is essentially... You flick it and it becomes a cube. And you flick it again and it becomes flat. Let's just say that won't be the last of Ada we'll be seeing. Simmons there. Yes. So as we, so uh, when we, as we find out they, they, as we find out who this man is, we'll see you in the next part, folks. Simmons. <laughs>